Hey there, my fellow designers and creatives. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another brand new course. This time, it's the super ultimate guide to design systems. We're going to learn everything about design system. This is going to be a knowledge packed course. I've spent a long time, almost around four months making this course, and I'm going to be teaching you every single thing that you need to know about design systems. And I'm going to teach it to you in a very unique and interesting approach that I've not seen anybody else online teach. So hopefully this is going to be very interesting and knowledgeable for you. So let's get started. Now, the first question you may have is who is this course for? So I'm going to categorize this into three different buckets. So you might be a beginner in creating design systems. You might be an intermediate or you might be an advanced person. Now, the, the entire course is going to make sure that you will have the knowledge of a person who falls under this category, which is basically the pro category. And what this pro category basically means is above the industry standard. It's not going to make you an advanced person, but it's going to teach you a lot of things that fall above the industry standard, right? So you're not going to be just meeting the industry standard. You're going to be going ahead a little bit further. No, of course, if you are a beginner, it's going to take you a lot of time to reach there. If you're an intermediate, it's going to take you less time, obviously, because you might have already had some experience. You might have built some really basic design systems, but you might not have understood how to use the new Figma features and a lot of these other things, right? So it's just about how much time you can invest to go to the pro level. Where you start from does not matter. Now, what I will not be covering is obviously going from pro to advanced. And because this is quite technical in nature, there's a lot of engineering things and there are a lot of coding things that go into this. And honestly, not every designer needs to know this. It's a very, very, very unique and a niche skill to have. And if you don't know it, it's fine because the industry does not expect you to do this. I'm going to be teaching you everything that the industry expects and a little bit more to give you that extra advantage. All right, so now let's talk about how you can implement the learnings that you'll learn from this course, right? So the first thing is you can create a brand new design system from scratch. Now you can do this as practice by picking up an app, or if you're already working in a company as a designer, you can go ahead and definitely build a brand new design system for them. You can also clean up your existing design system if you already have one, if you've already made one as practice, or again, if you work in a company and you have a design system, but it's sort of broken, you can clean it up. And of course, you can make your existing design system, which is already good, 100 times more efficient. And of course, we're going to be seeing Figma variables and how that fits in and design tokens and a lot of things, right? So these are the three ways you can implement your learnings. Now, let's talk about why you should learn design systems. Now, if you were to look at the skills of a product designer, there are particularly four skills that you need to have. You need to be great at UI design, UX design, problem solving, and product thinking. This is what the industry expects from you, and you need to be proficient in all of these skills to meet the industry standard. Now, design systems is another skill that you can add on to your existing product design skills. Now, the question is, why should you add it? The answer is because the industry standard is increasing. And what do I basically mean by that? The need for a design system across companies has increased. A lot of companies have started understanding the value of design. And of course, along with that comes the need for a design system to maintain a really good design. So a lot of companies are now setting up design systems with their designers. And of course, a lot of designers are also learning to build design systems. It's now 100 times easier to create an effective one. It was very hard to create an effective design system 10 years ago because the tools itself didn't allow us to do it. And slowly Figma has been launching a ton of features. And now with Figma variables and design tokens and even the amazing things Figma is going to release in the future, it's going to be a lot easier to create one. And of course, if it's going to be easier to create one, it means that companies are going to expect you to know how to create one because it's easy to create one. And one of the most important thing here is it's going to help you how to think like a developer. Because if you do not construct screens correctly, if you do not know how a design system works, if you don't understand what goes into making a design system, you will never be able to really ship really good designs and you're never going to be able to see your visions come to life. And if you want to ship really good products, you have to work with developers and which means you need to know how to think like one. And design systems is going to teach you how to think like a developer as well. Now, a big disclaimer is that having a knowledge of design systems is not a substitute for other skills. Unless you want to work solely on design systems, you can go ahead and just focus on design systems. But if you want to work as a product designer, having a knowledge of design systems is not going to be a substitute or a replacement for other skills. Design systems is an add on skill and is not to be learned in isolation if you are getting started in product design and you want to work as a product designer. So now let's talk about what this course actually covers. 
Now there are six things that I want to talk about. And as you can see, the third point is creating and documenting commands. Now this is pretty obvious that you would expect this from a design system course. But why is this number three? Because design systems is not just about auto layout and component properties and throwing things together, right? If you really have to create a really good design system, you need to have the right mindset. And setting this right mindset is the fundamental thing that you need to build and develop if you want to create a really good design system. The reason is because your target users are going to be the designers and your engineers. It's not going to be your customers. It's not going to be your consumers. It's going to be your designers and engineers. And this is going to require a very different mindset than what we usually have when we are solving problems for our customers. When we create a design systems, we are also solving problems, but we are solving problems for engineers and designers, and that requires a different skill set altogether. And of course, that comes with a different mindset. An effective design system makes a designer's and engineer's life easy. We are solving a problem for them. And if a design system makes it hard for engineers and designers, then you have not done a really good job of building an effective design system. And the whole reason is that designers should focus more on designing experience and solutions rather than figuring out what should be the font size, which component to use, what should be the focus state, what should be the transitions. All of these things have to be defined so that designers can easily focus on coming up with really good solutions, concepts and iterations rather than unnecessarily spending time on UI things that could be easily simplified. Basically, they should not have to spend time making UI choices. So that's the first reason. The second reason is making the correct design decisions. Once you have the right mindset, it will help you make the right design decisions. If you do not have the right mindset, you cannot make the correct design decision. It's just like adding a feature in your app or website. If the feature is solving a problem, we need to add it and we need to make sure that the feature works correctly and solves the user problem or as there is no point of having that feature. It's exactly with design systems as well. What's important to understand here is that it's not hard to create a design system. It's hard to maintain a design system. You can make a really bad design system very easily within a day, but then it's going to be very hard when you have to scale it. You need to accommodate a lot more things and you want to maintain it and make everybody's life easy. This is the challenge of design systems. It's not creating, it is maintaining. Making changes to the design system should not break or complicate things. If it does, then you've not done a really good job. And of course, you get to see how I iterate when I make a component. It's not just about me showing you the final design in the very get go. I'm going to take you through the process of how I start building one, how I iterate, how I make mistakes, how I make changes, and then come up with the right design decisions to make the final component that works perfectly well. And just reiterating on the fact, you get to see how I make the wrong design decisions. Obviously not in every component, some components are really simple, but in a lot of other complex components, you can end up making the wrong design decisions. And then I'm going to show you how I correct them to make the right design decision. So these are the th first three things. Now moving on to the fourth one, we're going to learn how to set up and use design tokens. Of, of course, I can't call this a super ultimate guide without considering design tokens. So we're going to understand everything about it and it's going to be very practical. I'm going to show you how to use the brand new Figma variables feature. Of course, this is just the beta version. And when Figma continues to make changes and updates, I'm going to be making dedicated videos and I'm going to be updating the course. So I'm going to make sure you're up to date with everything. And finally, I'm going to show you how devs use dev mode because in the end, you need to collaborate with engineers. I'm going to show you how to build that mindset to work with engineers as well. Now, one of the questions a lot of people might have is what about AI? How is this going to affect because AI is already doing a lot of things. Can this affect our skill of creating design systems? Now in the near future, there is a possibility that AI can do a lot of the work for you, which means it can go ahead and create and document design components. Now I'm not going to say it's going to do a perfect job, but it's going to simplify your life a lot and going even forward, even more into the future, it might even create design tokens automatically for you. And it's going to understand your entire system. Of course, it's not going to do a perfect job. It is going to require a good deal of human intervention. And that is where your right mindset and knowing how to make the right decision comes into place because your AI is only going to be very mechanical and executive in nature and you need to be the brains behind it. It might not do a very good job that suits your company's needs, your design's needs, and that's where you need to intervene and then you need to know how to use your right mindset and make the right design decisions and fix the mistakes the AI did or even how to train your UI to get the result you want. So how do you learn to make a design system? The answer is pretty simple. It's actually to make one. You're going to have to watch and you're going to have to practice and you're going to have to watch and practice and repeat that entire process. That is the only way you're going to learn design systems. It's not going to be a theory type video. You're not just going to sit and watch. You're going to follow along with me. Now, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be creating a design system for Airbnb. 
Now we all know Airbnb, we always consider it to be a really good design driven companies. But the reason I've chosen Airbnb is because we are going to clean up tons of inconsistencies that Airbnb has in their design system. And it is actually extremely shocking and surprising to see how such a design driven company can make a lot of mistakes. Now I'm not here to make fun of Airbnb. That's not the point. The point is even sometimes big, great companies can make a lot of mistakes, can have a lot of inconsistencies, and there can be many reasons for that as well. And we need to take the opportunity to learn from somebody else's mistake. And that's a very good way to learn things. So I'm going to show you in every video when making every component and making every design decisions, how to clean up these inconsistencies. We're going to learn things by fixing things. Now we're also going to polish the UI to make it much cleaner and minimal. I'm going to be taking a slightly different approach and a different visual style. It's not going to be completely different. It's going to be very similar like Airbnb, but I'm going to polish it a little bit more because a lot of screens are very noisy and lack a lot of hierarchy and honestly don't look great. Of course, most of their screens do, but sometimes screens can come out pretty ugly if you have a really poor design system. So we're going to go ahead and polish the UI. What now I really want to tell you here is that we're going to be creating almost 70% of the components. We're not going to be making the entire component library for Airbnb. We're going to be making 70% of the components and that should be more than enough to get a very rock solid understanding. And you can go ahead and make the other 30% of the components for you if you really want to practice and put your skills to the test. And this goes without saying, I'm going to show you how to create the dark mode version with component properties and design tokens. I'm going to show you how to really make a really good dark mode version. Airbnb today does not have a dark mode version, but we're going to see how a dark mode version would look like for Airbnb. Now, are there other ways to learn from this course? Now, of course, you can go ahead and create a design system for Airbnb by following along with me through the course. You can go ahead and create a design system for another app of your choice, right? You might pick up the learnings that I teach you from this and apply that to another app. Of course, it will never be a one-to-one -one correlation. There are a lot of different things that you might have to look at in another app, but the foundations and principles and fundamentals are going to be the same. So if you are pretty much an, an intermediate person, you can follow this approach, but it's totally left to you. And finally, you can obviously create a design system for the company you work at. You might not even have to create one for Airbnb. You can pick up some of the components and see how I do it and then tweak it and make changes so that it meets your company and your designs needs. Now let's talk about how you can access the course. You can go to learnproduct.design slash design systems to access the course. Now members who have access to the course can access everything absolutely for free right now. Every video you can access absolutely for free. But if you are not a member and if you do not want to purchase, that's absolutely fine. I'm going to release one video per week on YouTube and you can choose to learn it slowly. Now, what about the Figma file? Now, if you are a member, you will have access to the complete Figma file for free. And also you're going to get updates to the Figma file. And of course, Figma is going to make a ton of new changes and updates. And I'm going to obviously cover all of those. If I choose to make more additional videos, I'm going to make that as well and make changes to the Figma file accordingly as well, right? So all the updates and the entire Figma file, you're going to get access for free. But if you are not a paid member, you will not have access to the Figma file. Of course, you can watch the videos that I will slowly launch on YouTube. But if you really want access to Figma file, you will have to buy the membership. Membership. Now, are there any prerequisites before you take up the course? Of course. Now, there are a couple of things that I highly recommend you be really proficient at, and that is auto layout and component properties. I'm not going to be teaching you those in the basics. I have dedicated videos. I'm going to leave links down below in the description for you to check out these videos. Uh, there's a video on basics of design tokens. Obviously, I'm going to be covering design tokens in a lot more depth, but please watch this video to get a basic understanding. I'm going to be creating a lot of shortcuts because it's the first time you'll actually see me constructing something. So I have a video on that as well. You can check that out. You will obviously need to get the paid version of Figma for variables. Now, the reason it's a conditions apply is because if you want to create dark mode, you will need to have the paid version. So if you are a teacher or some sort of an instructor, you can get the paid version. You can get the educator plan. Or if you are a student, you can get the free plan. But of course, you can still follow along with the course. You just won't be able to transition your screens to a dark mode version because Figma will not allow that. And of course, you will need to download the serial font. This is Airbnb's font. You can just go to Google and search for it. You should be able to get it. The font is absolutely needed because we're going to try to learn how to trace things because without the right font, typography is going to go for a big toss and typography consists of 80% of the screen. So that's really important to have the right font. So with that being said, it's time to get started with the course. Make sure to go to learnproduct.design slash design systems to get access to the course and learn to create industry standard design systems. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. I'll see you guys in my next video. So then take care and bye-bye.